Hey there lads and ladies and welcome to the Pumpkin Patch, the only show where we talk all about PSV or because the mainstream media, you know, is just too good for us. And maybe it's not the only show, maybe I told you a, a lie in the very first opening line of this new show, but what are you going to do about it? Nothing. On today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch, we're going to be talking about Blood and Truth's release date. Where is that game? We're going to be talking about Firewall Zero Hour. Does it really need rounds? According to Yi, it does. We're going to be talking about the Game Awards, and we're going to be talking about Borderlands 2, and whether or not we should be hyped for it. So let's jump right in. Where the fuck is this game, lads? As William Shakespeare once said, O oh, blood and truth, blood and truth, wherefore art thou blood and truth? And I think Willie was right to ask that question. So we first saw Blood and Truth all the way back in Paris Game Week 2017, I believe. Uh, since then, we've seen new trailers and stuff like that at like game shows and demos, hands on impressions and things of that ilk. But uh, it did initially have a release window of 2018, unless I'm completely hallucinating it, but I feel like that was a date that was set in stone. And, uh, you know, we're quickly running out of 2018. And no matter how much Googling I do, I can't seem to find any details at all about the Blood and Truth release date, either if it's coming out this year or even if it's been delayed. Now, of course, why would I when the mainstream gaming media just doesn't even cover PSV or Google is a useless tool? Okay, maybe it's not that bad, but you, you know what I'm saying. So it's probably safe to say that Sony London's latest game has been pushed to 2019. Now why is that? Who knows? I mean, games do get delayed all the time. However, there have been, you know, lots of demos and stuff like that, like I said already, and some of the feedback from that seemed to be a bit mixed. So maybe Sony London Studios has taken that to heart, and maybe they're working on these things, you know, making things better based on the feedback that they got from these live shows. That's what I'm hoping anyway. But uh, if you're one of the people who are hoping they're gonna add in uh, free locomotion, don't, don't get your hopes up. That road will lead you only to disappointment. Smooth transition to Firewall Zero Hour. So here's something I wanted to ask all of you Firewall Zero Hour players out there. In particular, the ones who seem to insist that we need rounds in this game. Because I know there's quite a few of you out there in that category. Can you tell me why it needs rounds? Because right now, I play a match, I'm either an attacker or a defender, I finish the match, I go back to the lobby, I'm waiting 60 seconds. Uh, usually that's not enough time for me to change my loadout, or sometimes I'll forget and I just panic and just... 60 seconds is not a long time is what I'm saying. And then I hop back in and I'm on, I'm on either the attack or defending side, it loops depending on what I was on before, it switches to the opposite. So, so what I want to know is what would rounds add to that experience? Now, because I'm not saying I disagree with you, I'm not saying that rounds are a bad thing, I know it might come across that way, but it's just that I don't, I don't see it. So I want you to tell me why does Firewall need rounds? I just want you to blast all that education in and around my mouth, okay? So I can see the light, so I can be enlightened like you guys. And speaking of Firewall, it's been nominated as a VR Game of the Year in Jeff Keighley's Game Awards show. So if you think that Firewall Zero Hour is better than all the other games in that category, spoiler alert, it is then go over there and vote before it's too late. It might already be too late, I, d I don't know when the votes close, in which case disregard what I've just said. But on the topic of the Game Awards, I think all of us PSVR enthusiasts slash owners whatever should all be paying close attention to that award show because there's going to be a bunch of game announcements and surely some of them will be PSVR related. So definitely keep an eye on that. I'm actually thinking of streaming the award show on my YouTube channel so that we can Netflix and chill it together. Although I'm not too sure about like copyright rules and stuff like that. Maybe I'm not allowed to. I'll have to look into that more. So just ask your secretaries to pencil that into your schedules the 6th of December this Thursday the Game Awards show. Speaking of December, I have very mixed feelings about Borderlands. 
Did you know that Borderlands 2 is releasing in just a few days, and like a week or two, the 14th to be exact, I think. Now this has quite a few people hyped, but I want to know, are you hyped? And should I be hyped? Now I only ever played one Borderlands game before, and it was actually Borderlands 2, uh, but back then I played it on PS3, I didn't have friends to play it with because they were all, you know, morons who bought the Xbox, you know, they bought into that ecosystem rather than the superior PlayStation ecosystem. And because of that, I was playing solo and I really felt like that game was designed with co-op in mind. So I kind of dropped Borderlands 2 in a few hours. Now this is on PS3. Uh, so when I heard that Borderlands 2 was coming to PSVR, I was like, okay, this is my chance because I heard many good things about it. And now that I have many, you know, PS VR pals, thanks to this channel, I said, you know, okay, I'll hop in. So I was pretty hyped. Until I found out that the VR version will not have co-op, it also won't have aim support, at least not at launch. And uh, I won't have DLC, like all the DLCs normally, like with Skyrim for example, they added all the DLCs in with the base game. So it was like the game of the year version we got, rather than what Borderlands are doing with just like the base game, just single player and so that's kind of really deflated my hype a lot and i've got a really bad case of the soft penis the doctor doesn't know if i'll ever get better but i want to know what you think do you think we should look past these downgrades slash limitations and be just hype anyway or is it a steaming pile of dog shit and maybe we should just wait for the price to drop before we hop in on that one i want to know what you guys think about that and with that i would like to end the inaugural episode of the pumpkin patch feel free to give me your feedback on this format but be sure to only leave me with positive feedback if you give me any negative feedback, I will remove the comments and you will be banned from this channel. So please keep that in mind and thank you for understanding. I'm going to end the video here, but I implore you to check out the usual moist shice if you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.